Yeah, I know, I just... <laughs> That's looking like the right colour. It needs to be, because I'm copping a pasty. <laughs> Crowley's going, I'll show you how it's done, Nige. Show me how to do it once, now I'm going to show you how it's done. Ah, oh, I lost him. Oh. And shoved the hook away into my finger too. You're kidding. <laughs> there you go, and look at that. When someone says, I'll net him for you, Nige, sometimes you should just let them net him. Today, you and I are here to help Jamie. Jamie's a plumber from Melbourne. He likes long walks in the park and lattes and gossip magazines. Or well, maybe that's just me. What Jamie really loves doing is catching coral trout and for many years now he's been catching them on bait. So today we have a challenge. We're gonna help Jamie catch a coral trout on a piece of metal. And if it all goes to plan, we're eating beer battered trout with a beverage back at Jamie's holiday home because all good plumbers I know have beach houses. If we fail, I'm donning the apron and cleaning Crowey's house. So I grew up in northern Victoria in a little town called Swan Hill. We had a farm on the Murray River. I started fishing with my dad as a little boy, chasing Murray Cod and Yellow Belly. Eventually, once I moved out of Swan Hill and moved to Melbourne, I started fishing in Port Phillip Bay, fell in love with the bay, and um, have just kept chasing fish from all over Australia. That's wonderful. I wasn't expecting that. Well, you didn't expect to catch a fish on a piece of metal? No, I didn't. I wasn't even watching you. I'm trying to get stuff ready in the back of the boat. You're not maybe supposed I, to be fishing yet. Maybe I don't need you. <laughs> <laughs> First part to chasing reef fish on lures is to find the best places to fish. And to do that, my sounder becomes my best friend as well as a mobile approach. I like testing a range of depths early on in the day just to see where I can find the most bait holding as well as seeing visible signs of bigger fish arching on the sounder. And to do that, just pick different drift patterns with your boat so that you do cover different depths and very quickly you'll start to establish there's a pattern where you're catching more fish in say 30 metres or 20 metres and sometimes even 14 metres. My rule of thumb is that on the high tide I usually start shallow and work my way deeper and on the low tide I start out in the deeper water and then work into the shallower stuff. And once you've found where you're catching a few, just keep working those depths. Crowy, there's two ways that you'll fish these jigs. Head of the boat, head of the drift of the boat. You also fish them behind the boat. Usually I'll fish behind the boat in the deeper water because it's yep. a little bit easier to manage the jig. I reckon this, if you can fish ahead of your drift and work the jig back to you as the boat drifts onto it, it's by far, the, for me, the most effective way to catch them. Okay. But there's a little bit of a trick to it and the key is working out which way you're drifting. If you cast to the side of your drift, you very quickly start getting line drag. So okay. A, the jig doesn't behave flutter quite as well and look quite as good in the water. You also get a lot more snags. The key is working out exactly which way the boat's drifting and then making sure you cast ahead of the boat. Straight in line. Give it a little bit of a sink and then tight line. The most important tip and give anyone who wants to fish with metal jigs, you can keep your line tight throughout the retrieve. You're gonna stand to catch so many more fish, not get snagged as much. And then just so much using your reel. Don't use the rod too much. It's just your tool for basically filling a bite and then landing fish. Having caught fish using this technique before, I, I have belief in it and I know it works. When you're new to a, an approach and you're not catching fish straight away, it's not the fish's fault, they will eat. It's ultimately how you're fishing and how you're presenting a lure. Very much the ball is now my court as a communicator to try and get Crowy to believe in what he's doing it and fish subtly in a manner which is going to get him those bites. Oh no, that was one. Come on. It's a good little bite. Yep. Yes. Nice bite, Crowy. Mm, very Missed good. him the first time and he came up and ate it the second time. Well, and I think we want to get Crowy. <laughs> well done. See, they do work, Crowy. He had two goes at it, and quite often you'll find these guys are competitive. And talk to the trout pros, and they'll often find that on one bomb you'll find like sometimes a pyramid of trout. Right. And some people tend to think, oh, I've missed it, and they wind it away. Sometimes there's more down there. Extensions. Oh, go, 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 go. Put your hand on the spool, hand on the spool. Go, 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 wind, wind, go to him. Got to get that head up, get the head up. Nice. This might be it, this might be it. Go hard on him. It bit like a trout, Crowy. Yeah, it did. It's a good trout. Oh. 
Yes, that's the right one, Crowey. That's the one. Whoa! And there it is. <laughs> there you go. Oh well, thought I had the bottom there for a minute. Oh yeah. First trout on the lure. There you go. You might, might have turned you, you think? I think so. <laughs> I think so. It's a bit cool early in the day. Oh, that's great. <laughs> it's a trout, it's a cracker. Let him do his thing. Uh, oh, new jig, good. straight up. Oh, let him go. Back and drag off now. Oh yes, get this one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so much fun. Like, we're not using heavy gear. It's, no. You know, it's you know six to ten kilo outfits. Three thousand, four thousand size reel. That's twenty pound braid. I've got thirty pound braid. We've got forty and fifty pound leaders. Right. And you're feeling the sensitivity. You got Absolutely. These days, you don't have to fork out a lot of money for a good quality graphite rod. You get to feel that sensitivity. And I reckon once you've had a few more bites like that, you'd be pretty addicted to coming out here with some medals and whacking a few more of these. Now look, there's a rule in my boat too. You can't come out here and learn a new technique and then outfish me, all right? It's just not on. It's not as big as the last, but... Oh, let's not get fussy about it. Jeez. He's now, now he's getting selective. Crowy, yeah, showing how yeah. it's done. <laughs> Quite enjoying this. Why the style of lure works so well is it's weighty, it's fluttery, and it's got these big assist hooks on it, so it makes it snag resistant. They don't hang up in the reef as much, but that fluttery action that yeah. lands in their space yeah. and then looks like a bait fish that hops away but then freezes, they just, I think they're programmed to just not let stuff like that get away. That's why these lures are just such a good choice. Obviously using a few different styles of lures. I've got a little box of Asari's there. I sneakily picked away before I came up here. Yeah. And they seem to be doing the job. Two casts, two trout, mate. Number three. Hope so. Are you nervous? I am a little the, nervous. The crowd's doing a bit of a slow clap for you. <laughs> the field's come in. He's not bad or I'm getting tighter. <laughs> That's it. Good work, good work. Let him do his thing, let him do his thing. Oh, oh, oh. Do you ever get tired of seeing them come up, Chloe? I haven't yet. <laughs> <laughs> In fishing, when you start a new technique, the most important aspect of it is belief. The moment you start to believe what you're doing actually works, the faster you'll start to catch fish. I couldn't demonstrate it any better than to watch Crowy catch one, two, three, four fish and suddenly he's holding up a trout and saying, I've never caught this many trout in one day on baits, let alone on lures. And you can see that the belief is brimming out of him. And the more he starts to believe, the better he starts to fish that lure. It's the most important lesson anyone can learn that wants to try something new in fishing. There's two types of jigs that we're throwing around today and We've got more your classic knife style jig, obviously with assist hooks at the top. And then we've got the Frankie jig, which is the one that Crowy's opted to go for. Different shape, and with every different shape, you're gonna find a different action. This one's a little bit more, got a bit more of a fluttering yeah. action on the way down. That's what these guys are tuning into at the moment. And the lesson there is don't be afraid to go and try different styles of jigs. Sometimes that slightly different action is exactly what the fish will tune into. As well as that, if you head into the tackle store to get some of these. Different weights, obviously a different weight will lead to fish dip, different depths of water. So yeah. at the moment we're fishing with 60 grammers, 45 and 60 grams, mm -hmm. and we're fishing 25 to 15 metres of water. That being said, I've found trout in deeper water and shallow water. You've just got to get the right weight of jig to get you down to the bottom and let you effectively fish that retrieve. Make a little lure choice. Hold him, hold him, hold him, hold him. Hold him, hold him, hold him. One, Jamie. Yes, I got one too. I got one. Uh, oh, a good oh. one. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I'm getting leveled. Oh, oh. Oh. Good luck. Good luck there, Jamie. 
<laughs> you, you've been sharked, I think. Potentially been sharked, man. I think you're sharked. I'd hate to say. Yeah, I reckon you got sharked, dude. I'm gonna grab the net for mine while you're there. Oh, yes. That was a double. Penny, Penny, yours is a brute as well. So often happens, the big ones, sometimes something bigger comes along and goes. As much as we like eating trout, there's a few other things down there that like eating them as well. But you know what, we got we got 50% of them back, so there you go, mate. All right, oh. patch of trout. That's a bommy, typical trout bommy where there's obviously a pack of fish on it. One eats, another one will eat. And often where there's a pack of trout, there's often right. bigger predators as well. So I think uh, Jamie just learnt the lesson of the tax you man. the hard way. Oh, well. <laughs> Very, very, very upset with Nigel. He told me he'd come out here and give me all the tuition I needed. So I got this down. As soon as he picked up a fish as well, he just forgot all about me. I lost my prize fish. <laughs> well, you're asking for your tuition fees back now. Yeah, I'd like my tuition fees yeah, back, thank okay. you. You pay me first, then I'll give them back, all right? <laughs> Hey, Nige. Okay. <laughs> That's looking like the right colour. It needs to be, because I'm copping a pasting. <laughs> Crabby's going, I'll show you how it's done, Nige. Show me, show me how to do it once, now I'm going to show you how it's done. Ah, oh, I lost him. Oh. And shoved the hook way into my finger too. You're kidding. <laughs> there you go, and look at that. When someone says, I'll net him for you, Nige, sometimes you should just let them net him. And I copped a good hook in the finger too, Crowy. Had a bit of injury to insult. You like a trout? Yep. After the last one, I might get you to put it in the net. Thank you, Jamie. Nice little trout. Yeah, uh, very distinctive bite. It's nice to be holding one of my own again, Jamie. <laughs> Getting a uh, lesson. Never felt so good though, Jamie. Oh, I'm glad. <laughs> it's the last time you can do it, right? <laughs> How's he going? I don't know, he's going for a swim. <laughs> Did you see the other ones? Cause they were, they were trout, were they? Yeah, they were. Got a net. Having fished in tournament teams before and watched an angler fish with you get into a rhythm, it's like watching a well-tuned athlete go into confidence mode. Everything starts falling for them. And it was great to see Crowy just start racking up the numbers to the point go, where he started giving me go, an go. absolute schooling, go, letting me know all Come about on. it, of course. But there can be no more satisfying aspect for me as a fishing journo and a communicator to see him absolutely kicking my butt yep. in the numbers count. Oh, yep. oh no. I just got done. <laughs> I lost our last lure. Sorry, Jamie. Oh, no. It's not a bad size. It's a nice fish, Crowey. Nice one, nice one, nice one. Oh. Oh yes! <laughs> now it's just getting bigger and better. Look at that chunk of a thing. Oh. Oh, well done, Crowy. How good are these little metals, mate? You, you reckon now that uh, trout kind of like them? I don't think I'll ever buy a packet of pilchards again. Oh, you will some stage, but you'll have a bit of fun with these in the meantime. <laughs> Absolutely. Today was my first time uh, fishing with metal jigs. I was blown away with their ability to catch fish. Uh, I've always been basically a bait fisherman and, and Nigel insisted that I, I try using metal jigs and uh, yeah, I, I couldn't believe the outcome.
So moving forward for, for me, uh, when I travel up here from Victoria to fish, I'd always be organising how I'm going to get my fresh bait and, and ringing the tackle shop and making sure they've gotten some frozen bait that, that I like using. Now I don't have to worry about any of that. I can buy my metal jigs in, in, in town anywhere and, and bring them with me. And I guess the thing about the, the jigs, it's a little bit uh, um, contagious as far as where you stop. You end up with a whole lot of jigs that are all a different colour. But um, for me, I won't be putting as much emphasis on uh, making sure I've got bait from here on. <sighs> oh, he's a good one. Oh yes! It's kind of nice copping and pasting from you. <laughs> I'm enjoying oh, seeing this come before. up. Hasn't happened before. No, it's, it's cool getting the hang of something and working out very quickly how to do it. That is so, so cool. Very good teacher. Oh, well, <laughs> I'll take the pasting. <laughs> as long as you let me eat some of your trout tonight, I'll be happy, Craig. How cool is that? You smash that. Far out. Just brutalised me that thing. Let's go easy on the drag now. Good that net there, Crow. Yep. That's a good fish. Oh. Woo! <laughs> oh my goodness. Ah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> it's just lock drag. You give these fish nothing. That's <laughs> gotta be able to not pull drag off your reel because you can't give them an inch. And everything hurts when one of those gives it to you. And talking about small hooks before, they're small but solid. And you got two of them as well, so you get those hooks in there and then you just gotta do your best to keep them away from ground on puff. That is a good trout. <laughs> Man, they pull hard. They make you work every step of the way, Crowy. They have but today. what a marvellous fish and on the good old medals. I came out to show Crowy that these things do work. He's taught me a bit of a lesson on the fact that yes, they do work. But I reckon we might have created a bit of a monster now on the lures. Because this is just so much fun being able to explore beautiful country, fish a range of depths, very versatile lure. You can fish it and pretty much wherever you can get it down to, they'll eat it. And with a little bit of technique, a bit of the right gear, in for a whole lot of fun. And a good feed at the end of the day. And speaking of a feed, mate, I reckon we've had a pretty good day out here. We had a pretty good day. Uh, we might have to head back and start looking at getting the barbie warmed up. A couple of beers on ice. Um, Fresh but, trout. I might have to get the apron on because considering the uh, the bum smacking I've got from Crow today on the lures, I might have to do a bit of cleaning. All right, let's get out of here. So originally Nigel wanted a beer battered dish tonight, but considering I won uh, the fishing competition, I'm going to cook it my way. And so using the beautiful fresh cold trout fillets that we caught on the jigs today, I'm going to do a roasted dish with three equal parts of soy, mirin and brown sugar that I put into a small saucepan and bring to boil. Uh, while that's boiling, we cut the fillets into nice chunky pieces. I put them in a very hot pan, sizzle each side, into foil, take a little bit of the sauce that's sizzling away over the top of the fillet and into the oven on about 180 for 15 minutes. Bring it out, a little bit more of the sauce spilled over the top and ready to eat. The day culminates and we've got a great feed of coral trout. Crow is now off in his element, cooking up a storm. But I know what the ensuing days now mean for Crow. He's got a, a spring in his step, he's conquered another goal. Now it means new tackle for him. He is now officially addicted. He will be looking at changing the layout of his boat, his tackle boxes, and I know that he'll be sitting in Melbourne right now thinking about how quickly he can get back to those offshore places that we've fished and be jigging again for coral trout.